Hello everybody and welcome back to net.touchplus.com. In this quick tip video mini-series, we're going to be focusing on SAS. So we've covered less on the site in the past, and it's, SAS is very similar to it, but it actually provides a lot more flexibility and power. So whether you choose SAS or less really depends on your specific needs, but you can do some really cool things with SAS that you may not know about. So we're going to go over that over the course of about three quick tips, and I'll show you exactly how to get set up. All right, so you'll want to visit SAS dash lang.com and the first thing that needs to be made clear is uh, it's easy to assume when you see all these gems that you need to be working with with rubies or the rails framework in order to use this and that's absolutely not true you can use this with a static website and it'll work just fine though you do need a tiny bit of knowledge of the terminal but don't worry even if you only memorize these functions it's not that big of a deal all right so that's going to be the first step is we need to install ruby and sass now if you're on a mac like me you don't need to worry about that ruby 1.8 comes pre-installed uh, if you do want to go to 1.9 you can go ahead and upgrade but you don't need to for the purposes of using sass now if you're on Windows, you'll want to use something a little bit different. There is a Windows installer that you can look into. Uh, you can check right here and that'll get you set up and you'll want to run through that. Okay, so assuming you've gone ahead and you've installed Ruby or it's already installed on your system, you can move on to the next step and that's going to be to install Haml, which integrates SAS. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up my terminal and let's go ahead and clear that out. And what we want to do here is called gem install Haml. Now, you might want to be careful if you run that command and it does not work, make sure you're running it as, as, an, as an administrator. So in Windows, you'd want to open up the command line as an administrator, or on the Mac, you can use sudo, which means run as administrator. And you'd call sudo gem install Haml. Now, in order to use gems, if you're using an older version of Ruby, you'll need to download Ruby gems. And you can either download it as a zip file, and it's pretty easy to get set up. So you can see it would be a matter of downloading one of these files and then accessing Ruby setup.rb from the terminal, and that'll get you all set up. It's very easy. Now, if you are running a newer version of Ruby, such as 1.9, Ruby Gems comes pre installed, so you don't have to worry about this at all. But if you're just using the built in or the pre installed Ruby on your Mac, you'll probably want to go ahead and get this set up. But it's very easy. Don't let it confuse you if you're more of a designer. It's not a big deal. Now, if you're not sure if you have it installed, one thing that you can do is just check to see uh, what version you have. So you could do gem-v, which means gem version, and you can see here I have 1.6.2 installed. Okay, so once again, let's go ahead and install it. sudo gem install Haml. And I need to put in my computer's password. And this will take anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. So I'll go ahead and pause and restart once all the documentation has been installed. Okay, and as you can see, that's done. Now, if you try to install this and you get some kind of error, maybe it says something like you don't have permission, again, make sure you're running it sudo gem install. And then if that doesn't work, also make sure you're running the latest version of Ruby gems. So if you did a gem dash V for the version and it comes up with maybe 1.3 or something like that, you will want to go ahead and update that. And that's very easy. You can see it right on their website, gym or pseudo gym update dash dash system. And then I'll get that taken care of for you. And I'll clear that out. So now if we type SAS and we do dash H for help, this will bring up SAS and we know that it's installed. So I'll go ahead and expand this out. And here are our options that we can work with do this a little bit more but the first thing we want to do is just go ahead and create some little project to work with so I'll go ahead and load up MacVim and let's just create a new file in our desktop and we'll call it testing okay and now with that file open let's go ahead and save this file and we'll save it as in, I'm sorry style dot scss sass css so don't worry about doing the normal file, just do your SAS file and then we'll dynamically create the actual CSS file. And let's just double check and sure enough we have our file within testing. Okay, so within here let's just add something simple. The Originally the way SAS worked, and you can still do it this way if you want, it was a much more succinct syntax. So if we go to dot .sass, you can see that you would create a class and it got rid of all the curly braces and things like that. Now I think what happened is a lot of people 
uh, it turns them off a little bit because we do like having those braces. It, it makes it a little more easy to separate. I know that was the way with me and it's why I initially gravitated towards less a little bit more. But with uh, this SCSS syntax, it's much more uh, similar to even the proposed official syntax for adding variables and such to CSS files. So let's go ahead and play around with this really quickly. I'm going to go ahead and give it height of 50 pixels width of 50 pixels and background of brown. Okay, so now we haven't added any dynamic functionality, but that's okay right now. We have this file. So let's go back into the terminal, and now what we're going to say is we want to make sure that SAS is watching this file. So if I list the files and we browse to it, now you can see that we have that one file in there. So at this point, we want to tell SAS, watch this file. And you can see right here, this option dash dash watch, watch files or directories for changes. And that's exactly what we want. And they even give you an, this is how you would call these options, SAS and then dash dash option name. And then you pass in the file that you're looking at, colon, and then the optional file that this will be output as. So for example, let's say SAS, and we're gonna watch style.scss. And then once you parse it, you're gonna export that as style.css. And that's it. Okay, so now, and I refresh this, now you can see that that command alone, and that will run for the lifetime of your project. You don't have to run that every time. But now every single time that you save this file right here, this will be loaded as well. So let's try it out, background, red and now if I go back to this file now can you see that it's been changed to red okay so now as far as what options are available a lot of the same options that are available unless we can use so that'll include things like variables mix-ins uh, nested selectors but then in a future lesson we'll look at even the added integration that you can use all the added plugins for SAS that gives it all the extra power so let's take a look at just some really quick ones first so we'll go ahead and create one and we'll say main color is going to be say green okay now let's go here and we're going to change this and now we can reference a variable for our main color and sure enough you can see that's being referenced so you create variables you prepend you prefix them with a dollar sign really easy uh, what else can we do really quickly uh, let's say that we have div and then we want to reference or instead how about ul so we have our unordered list and then we want to also reference the list item so we could do normally ul li like that right but instead, why don't we just nest it in right here, and SAS will go ahead and parse that for us. And we could say display inline, and here we could say background red. And sure enough, can you see that it has UL and then ULLI. So notice here the this nested way it works as far as the output. You can adjust that with the options. Let's go back to terminal. So again, remember how we can do help and this will show all of the options that are available to us. Now the one we want to take a look at is style. And this determines how the output of the, the style sheet is. So by default it's nested as you can see right here. But you have the, these other options like compact, compressed, and then expanded which is normal. So let's say we want this generated style sheet to be as, as compressed as possible for production. Alright, we would do SAS style and we got to give it the name we want compressed and remember the option is available right here and now we need to give it the input output style and then style.css and that's it so now again load file and you see that automatically updates it okay so that's been our crash course for this very first lesson we've learned how to install sas and we've learned how to create variables and how to work with options in future lessons we'll take things further we'll work with mix-ins math importing style sheets and using some of the add-ons that provide even more power for sas so stay tuned